Jason Vaughan and you're watching Food Mood. I travel around the world almost purely for food and I put together guides to help people eat the best food when they go traveling. I am in Slovenia and the capital city of Ljubljana. This is a place I do not know much about. I know they got Luka Doncic, I know they got lots of forests and I know they do orange wine. Big fan of all those things. Over the next three days, I am on the hunt for the best food that Slovenia has to offer. I'm gonna document everything that I've eaten, all the new food that I'm about to try and then tell you at the end, is Slovenian food any good? This guide is all about finding a wicked mix of Slovenian food, including traditional eats, finer dining options, and banging new restaurants that are setting this city on fire. It's all about those type of restaurants that are you're not gonna find just punching into Google, and the ones that you will not see on those traditional travel guides. So stick with me, I'm gonna have a monstrous feed and document it all. Before I get eating, I'm gonna ask for one favor and that's if you can press that subscribe button down there, just press it as if you're trying to win some big money on the pokies. All right, it's time to eat. My first stop in Slovenia is for sausage and I'm at Kobosana. Kobosana literally means sausage shop. So I'm banking on getting some quality Slovenian snags here. I've got myself the half sausage. It comes with mustard, horseradish, a hot baguette sort of vessel, and then of course plenty of sausage. Sausage itself is quite reddish brown on the outside, slightly pink inside, and I've gotten a beer to go with it. This is a Slovenian pale ale. They're huge on their craft beers here, and this one is just located technically in Austria, but it is a Slovenian craft brewery. The owners here recommended that if you want a fruity beer, this is a great one to start with. Apparently there's no right way to eat a sausage, so I'm just gonna try the sausage by itself first. Mmm, there we go. Slightly smoky, very peppery, garlicky. Reminds me so much of a bratwurst. It's very much that style of sausage. Let's try it with a bit of mustard. And then I'm not sure if it's right to do this, but a bit of horseradish as well. Get it looking saucy. Mm. That is so good. Very Germanic, very much meaty and just a little bit of kick there from mustard and horseradish. Uh, okay, yeah, the story behind this place is uh, well, so this really is multi, very crafty. I'm standing in the courtyard of Ljubljana Castle, just caught a funicular to get up towards the roof. You can walk up to the top if you want, or you can pay for the cable car. It's about 13 euros if you get the cable car and the castle entrance tour. I'm gonna have a squeeze around this castle, and then my next restaurant is in a pretty epic location. big hike around the castle. Really good time to see it is towards sunset because then you can go to this Vinoteca on the western side of the castle and get yourself Old Faithful. Aperol spritz. Sun's starting in my eye line now. Oh, it doesn't matter. So nice. Really nice views, beautiful sunset where you can see behind the mountains. Spritz could have been a little bit stronger, not super strong like the Italians. It doesn't matter, whenever it's hot weather, a spritz is going to be delicious. For dinner, I'm at the opposite end of the spectrum. I'm at a restaurant called Strelik. It is in the Arches Tower of the Ljubljana Castle, looking at those magnificent views I've seen before. Michelin Guide restaurant, more of a fine dining experience. I've gone for five courses and pairing five Slovenian wines with it. Cannot wait for these glorious vinos. Absolutely stunning interior. It's a little bit medieval, a little bit historical, and certainly regal. First, we have the Amazé Bosch Goose Foie Gras. 
and marmalade, to put very simply. Cherry with chicken pate, a pickled onion with another foie gras, can't remember it. And some beautiful house-made bread served with smoked butter. Oh man. Rich from the meat, very sweet from the marmalade. Mm. A little bit more savory, pickly sweetness from that onion and a nice little crunch from the breadcrumb. It feels very soft on the outside, like it'll burst underneath my fingers. Mm. Probably my favourite. Very soft gelatinous casing on the outside. Smooth richness from the pate on the inside. Got the bread here. Unbelievably soft from all the butter on top. Oh. That's really bloody good. That smokiness of the butter reminds me of Agnes back home. Super smoky, super creamy, unbelievably smooth. Two more introductory starters before the five course meal gets going. An emulsion with some trout underneath. Looks like a dragon egg dumpling. And inside the dumpling is also trout. Caviar inside. I'm gonna see if we can cut it. No, I've just skewered it with my spoon. <laughs> Ooh. Vinegary sauce on top. There's like a slight bit of kick from it. And then you have the nice soft deli dumpling. First wine of the wine tasting, Malvasia, biodynamic, uh, organic wine from the coastline. It's so fresh and light. So bloody pure. This is a venison tartare with brioche, champagne dressing, and 10 other things on top. Never seen tartare wrapped inside a pickle. That is new. It's getting dark now. This is an orange Riesling, Slovenian wine, natural wine. Ooh. It's quite saline, this, this and then very like peachy, like Oof. banger. This is the roasted cauliflower, cauliflower puree, truffle, truffle mayo dish. Even egg yolk at the bottom. Mm. The next dish is called onion. It's got a few different types of onions, shallots, it's got onion cream at the bottom of it. There is aged beer, foam and cheese around it and a beautiful little gelatinous gel thing going on. Very sophisticated, very fancy. Time for this onion dish. I'm just gonna go in, hack it up. Oh, look at that cream. Little bits of onion down the bottom. Oh, what's this big chunk here? It's like a little pudding thing. And there's like more cottage cheese inside. Mm. Oh my God. Savory onions, sweet onions. Everything just works so well together. They've made onions a main dish. The wine pairing is a Sauvignon Blanc from Breda, which is Western Slovenia. This is the turbo with Adriatic corn foam. There's a house-made dumpling on the side, peanuts. It's just spectacular. Oh. Rich fish flesh, very nutty. Quite long, maturated. It's like more orange wine. Uh, and aged in a oak barrel. I have our first orange wine of the night. I actually thought the others were orange, but they were just had that tinge of orange. This is the proper orange wine uh, from the Vipava Valley. Oh, yeah, just that little bit of extra fun to it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of orange wine. We are ending on a banger of dessert. It is poached peach. It is peach cream, there is white chocolate, and there is homemade, house-made rosemary ice cream. Also got a glass of Beef Harbor Valley dessert wine. Let's start with this. Oh, that's just like honey, quite honestly. That literally tastes like liquid honey. Rosemary ice cream. While there's other random strangers that I've never met before having a oh, similar okay. That's a little bizarre, but it really works. Next we've got the poached peach and the honey waffle on top. Mm. 
heavenly way to finish off. This has been a spectacular feed. What a feed that was. It's time to head home. We're gonna eat even more things tomorrow. It is another sunny day in Yulbiana. Still reeling from that feed last night at Stroic. That was incredible. I'm gonna try and find some specialty coffee to get the morning going. Yeah. I might be at the only specialty coffee store in Slovenia that's open on a Sunday morning. This is Cafe Kokul, sustainability focused coffee shop which focuses on getting more trade coffee beans and roasting everything in house. All I've got is my flat white, that's what I need to get started. Oh yeah, nice and punchy, creamy flat white. Good start. Slovenia is pretty big on their dumplings. Not the type of dumplings that I grew up with, like the Asian style Japanese gyoza or the Shaolong Baos. These dumplings are much bigger. I'm at a place called Moji Shrukli, and this is one of Slovenia's first dumpling houses. Before I get into the dumplings, I've wanted to get yota, which is a type of stew made with sauerkraut served with bread. Here's a yota, a nice big bowl, and it's served with a softer white bread and then a, a like an almost like a charcoal looking black sort of bread interesting they're quite soft both of them oh, look at that sauerkraut I'm a huge sauerkraut guy looks like there's some beans in here too It's like a savory tomato base, and then you get the, the acidic vinegar flavors from the sauerkraut. That's really nice, and it's like very, very smooth. Rip off a bit of white. Get that all deep in there. Okay. Mm. Bread was already so soft, when you dip it in there, it just gets even softer. Soaks up all that hearty flavor from the yota. Time for the mystery black bread. Mm. Okay. I'm not really sure what that flavor is. It's very, it's like, just tastes a little bit more wholemeal, but it's not like a huge amount of difference. Very similar flavor to that white bread. Got some OJ to go with. Very simple and pretty cheap too. Oh, so fresh. I'm just sucking up all this pulp through the straw. So my dumplings have just arrived and they are massive. First one, homemade cottage cheese dumpling. That's our savory option. And the second one is the chocolate and raspberry. Juicy raspberries and dark chocolate. And then topped with raspberry sauce and melted dark chocolate. So all the sauce you could possibly want. All right, big old strictly, some sauce on top. Oh wow. Really soft inside. It looks so cheesy. Hmm. Definitely get that soft, creamy flavour. Very, very mild in taste, but cottage cheese is definitely something that you can taste. And a little bit of crunch from that. I think it's a breadcrumb sauce on the top, so it's really different. Time for the big boy. <laughs> this is the chocolate and raspberry let's have a look at this one so saucy so much going on nice pink and chocolate layers on the inside let's try and get plenty of that sauce hmm. sweet is more my jam i'm still getting used to that dough flavor it's like the chocolate is like a sort of like a really light saucier chocolate it's interesting the raspberries are fresh. I do get around that. Had a red hot go at the Slovenian dumplings. 
I've got to say, my favorite thing was probably the yota, the sauerkraut hearty soup, and then the dumplings themselves. I'm not sure if they're for me. They're so like soft and gooey type of dumpling dough. Really interesting to try. You do have to try it, see if it's for you. I'm not so sure, I'll still decide. I'm standing outside a place called Honey House. This is a place down the main old square of Ljubljana and it's very easy just to walk in there and do a massive tasting of honey. Uh, it has some kind of a fresh taste to it. Some also say it has a citrusy flavor. Thank you. Sweet, so creamy, and a little bit granular as well. There's a gentle sweetness to it. Uh, we use it also for the, for the fruit to put inside it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. This is chestnut honey. Oh. It's so strong. It's a first I ended up picking up the flower honey. It's all Slovenian canola and honey. They've got everything from traditional honey, the floral honey, coconut honey, orange honey, all different types of honey, all from Slovenia. Even the buckwheat, blueberry honey, everything was exquisite. This is Vigo ice cream, and this is the Vigo ice cream flavor. It has fresh mascarpone, chocolate, and hazelnut. And you can put a little bit of chocolate dressing on top if you want white chocolate or dark chocolate. That is phenomenal ice cream. I like all the things inside this flavor. It just works so well together. Get that dark chocolate drizzle on top. Unreal. That was incredible ice cream. I reckon I'm gonna head there again before I go home. It was that good. Maybe check out another one, but definitely Vigo is a spot. The neighborhood restaurant scene in London and I'm looking for a place that sort of fits the bill here in Slovenia. I found Bragg which is in Ljubljana just by the river. It was started by Slovenia's youngest ever Michelin star chef and he just wanted to do something a little bit more casual, you know, something a bit more exciting, use some very good ingredients and make very simple food. Here they do beloved bistro classics with a little twist. This is the first wine of the night. This is a blend of four grapes from the Bukhava Valley, so all indigenous grapes from Slovenia. This is an orange wine. Skins aren't kept on the grapes for too long, so that's why it's a more of a whiter orange color. So nice. This is the bread selection to get going. First we have house-made focaccia. This one has capers, olives, and potentially a pesto on it. This one is a sourdough from a bakery across the street. Really nice way to get going. First two appetizers have arrived. First we've got the dry aged steak tartare with a marinated egg yolk, marinated in soy, looks brilliant, and got homemade french fries. The second dish has trout, caviar, radish, and dill. What's going on in a creamy base sauce? Steak tartare fruits here. Such an orange yolk. So rich, so creamy. Fritz. Mm. Golden brown flavor on the outside. Nice and crunchy. Second is our trout dish. Look at the presentation on this. I'm gonna scoop up a little bit of fish with the burnt leaf on the outside. Mm. So much going on with that. The strong fish flavor. There's that almost charred texture on the outside, and it's like really creamy as well. There is so much happening in one small fish fry. Second wine of the night is a red blend. It's got Cabernet Sauvignon, it's got Merlot, and Tiran, another local Slovenian grape. This one is from down south in the Premesco region. Ooh. All right. 
it's like a very full body natural wine uh, a little bit of I have to taste it again. That's more of a dark fruit, so you get like more blackberries or blueberries, that sort of vibe with this type of drink. It's good. Here we have the steam buns, fried shrimp, kimchi and with emulsion. This is a dish which has been on the menu since day one. Almost looks like a katsu chicken, but this is prawn. Maybe it's like a taco as well. Mm. It's flavor town. You can't see any of the kimchi until you bite into it. But once you do, all that kimchi is just hiding inside underneath that prawn. I've got a gigantic main here. It is a dry aged barbecue pig pork chop with a potato salad. It is a monstrous beast. It has a charcuterie sauce that goes with it. And it's got chicken stock, pork stock, soy sauce, and I assume some other juicy sauce as well. There's a meaty boy. Beautiful white flesh. I'm just gonna chop off a bit of fat. I don't think I can eat that much fat in one go. Dip in the sauce. Oh yeah. Such decadent pork meat, gelatinous fat, that is heavenly. What a bite. And that the sauce is so Moorish as well. So Benny and Pig, unbelievable. Potato salad comes with the chop. That potato salad is alive. There is actually a flavor, mustardy, vinegary taste to it. Um, potatoes are nice and soft, super fresh. Glass of bread with the pork. Yep, it's great. This pork is so good, the bee just keeps coming back and trying to eat more of it. Get off, that's mine. Yeah. I've just spotted on the table. They have this award-winning Sylvanian olive oil. So I'm going to grab a piece of focaccia and smother it with this. Mm. So nice and fatty. I'm feeling extra greedy tonight. So I've gotten two desserts. One, and both are two of my favorite desserts ever. One is a burnt bass cheesecake. This one comes with a house-made plum sort of kue jam thing. And the other one is a classic house-made tiramisu. Oh. Nice burnt layer on top. Definitely one of my favorite desserts ever. They're so creamy. Tiramisu, nice geometrical square. Yeah, lots of cocoa dusting on top. Let's get into it. Oh, really soft. That is so boozy. And then you get the mascarpone. That was Breg, that was brilliant. And that was the last stop of day two gonna hit the hay and then get back into more eating tomorrow. Morning. I've taken a very calm approach this morning. Very easy, just walk through Tivoli Park. It's a massive green space in the middle of Yubiana. A short walk from the central part, a little bit overgrown, kind of like a forest. You won't see manicured lawns here. You'll see some funky signs. You'll see some dog statues. Otherwise, it's really cool. Great way to start off your morning in Yulbiana. Anyway, off to some food. This is Cordilla Gourmet. This is a restaurant just outside the main touristy areas. It's very quiet here at 8 a.m. ish for breakfast. We're going pretty much the opposite of that walk, going hard and hearty. 
nice and fresh. They even put the orange peel in there. I've got some air-dried ham or Slovenia's answer to prosciutto. I was just expecting to get the meat itself, but it's come with some bread, some greens around it, nice mountain of meat, and then a little green sauce underneath. Looks pretty cool. Trying this ham just by itself. Mm. Salty. It's like very bold flavor. And then a little bit nutty. Mm. Works really nicely together. The green sauce is like a creamy garlic type sauce. Like an aioli, but aioli on crack, I would say. There is so much more flavor than a typical aioli. Got my borach here, pork, beef, venison, and boar. It looks really hearty. This is gonna be some rocket fuel in the morning. Oh, that's a nice light stew. All the meat bits. Got plenty of hotness to it. Think of it as a light goulash with super tender meat. Just getting crushed by my tongue. Didn't even need to use my teeth there. It's definitely like paprika and then all the taste of the meats in there. It's like one giant meat stock. Get some bread in there. Oh. Nice. This is a Primerskin Ibenitsa or layer cake. It has four different layers, sugar on top, walnuts, poppy seed, apple, and cottage cheese. There seems to be cottage cheese in almost everything here. I wanna try and cut through. <laughs> okay, I've just destroyed this cake. But I wanna get every layer if I can. This is a mutilated piece of cake. It's slightly warm, very fruity. You can have that, all the little poppy seed textures right in there. And then a little creaminess from the cottage cheese. It's very much like an apple strudel, but without all the creaminess. lunch I'm at Taba. This is a new restaurant that I'm very excited to hit up. They do Slovenian inspired tapas using local ingredients and all natural wines. And all the natural wines here are within a 200 meter or within a 200 km radius of Ljubljana. So you're getting everything from East Coast Italy up to Austria, Croatia and of course all the glorious Slovenian wines. Had so many brilliant ones here, can't wait to have some more. It is a little rice cake thing, ones with carrot, ones with beetroot. There's tapioca underneath and there's a little bit of like rice flour on top. The beetroot. Oh. That is bizarre. Tasty, but bizarre. This could be carrot or rice. Mm. A little more Moorish that one. This is a Radicon, one of the natural winemakers from the northeast of Italy, just near the border of Slovenia. Uh, Radicon is a pretty famous winemaker. Wanted to try this one for a long time. Never had the chance. This one is on by the glass. That is juice, pure juice. Two first dishes have arrived. The first one it is just beautifully presented. We've got Bardo. It undergoes a four month dry aging process and lots, lots of pretty pestles on top, lots of herbs, and then it looks like some flaky, flaky peppers as well. The second thing is hot smoked carb to bar style. Uh, one of the classics on the menu here. Served with a little horseradish and lime. Oh, that just looks so thin and gelatinous. That is so juicy and it's a little bit warm. It brings out a little bit more salty flavor. Hot smoke trout time. Come for the big fleshy part here. We're gonna get all the sauce as well. We've got a little bit on the end there. Mm, 
so smoky, so fresh, so much flavour, especially with that horseradish and lime with it. Next dish is probably the most wild form of Adriatic sardines you'll see. These ones are coated in corn, I believe, and then peppers. And then on top you have a flatbread, there's capers, there's Kalamata olives, and there is a young onion mayonnaise, which is green. Um, unbelievable stuff. These are so much more sophisticated than your regular sardines and olive oil. It's All these bad boys. So crispy. I can feel the tail breaking off as I grab it. Mm. So much crunch on the skin. Not sure how to assemble this. I'm going to put this on the end and then bite off the flatbread. have the acidity from the olives, the capers, and then that creaminess from the mayo. Next wine is another orange. This is a Slovenia wine just above the, the, the Carver Valley, I believe. Uh, this one is said to be a bit more like a white, but it's orange. Very fresh and a bit salty. Final dish at Tabar, we've got the tub burger. This has a medium cooked meat. It has pancetta, goat's cheese, or even onion jam. This is a massive slime. <laughs> and I love it. Oh. That is unbelievable. That medium rare cooked meat, buttery brioche, all the flavors inside of it. Final glass of red is from the same winemaker as the previous orange. It's bold, but it's, it's very low in alcohol. It just works really nicely with red meat. I'm finishing off eating in this city with a food tour. The company is Triana Yum, and it's gonna take us across a quite a few different spots across the city at the end. I'll tell you if it's worth it. Finished the food tour and I've learned a lot more about Slovenian food. I will say one thing, I've actually already been to two of the places. A place where we got dumplings and one of those Slovenian inspired tapas places. I can't disclose everywhere that we went because that would probably destroy the tour business. But what I will say is what I did have. Started off, we had more dumplings and they were better than the two that I had. Had some reset barley stew, had some bear salami, blueberry schnapps, Istrian cuisine, funky gelato flavors, Slovenian craft beer, and a little bit more. It was a really cool tour. Found a few new spots to share with you guys later on Instagram, but otherwise it was a great food tour and I was so full. So the question still hanging around, is Slovenian food any good? The answer is yeah. But the best thing about Slovenian food is one, the quality of the produce they have in this country and two, the rise of the modern restaurants. The traditional food, it's not so exciting. It's a bit more hearty, a bit more wintry sort of food. And then in a lot of cases, it's lacking color. And what do we know about food that lacks color? It doesn't really have that extreme pop of flavor. What I will say is the modern restaurants in this city are phenomenal. The highlights were definitely for me visiting Strelec in the Arches Tower of the Castle, going to Breg by the riverside, and then having the Slovenian inspired tapas at Tabar, and then all those glorious orange wines and indigenous Slovenian wines. When you come to the city, you have to try the traditional sausage, you have to try the yota or the sauerkraut stewy dish, and you have to try the dumplings. You have to try the traditional food. But for me, where the food really thrives, it's with these modern restaurants in the city. And it's a must do when you come and eat food in Ljubljana. I would not say Ljubljana is a massive food destination, but Slovenia is a beautiful country that needs to be seen by everyone. And make sure you eat real good food when you come to this city. So, I hope I haven't pissed off too many Slovenians. Let me know what you think. Drop it down in the comments below. And if you've got the chance, please slam that subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.